what do you think? I know this was here. This is not an STI. Well, it kind it halfway. We're we're halfway there. I don't think this thing has heated seats. But yeah, this is this is useless. But now I think this is much better than what it was because it matches this now and these knobs. I don't know about this. I'm not sure. This is for someone with small hands. Could be. I don't know. I still gotta pull this down some more. Okay, much better there, but still, I don't know how to position this leather. I don't remember how it is in my car. The 06 STI, I think it's something like this. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna need a different knob for regular people. I don't even know what this is. Okay, inside done. Hey guys, welcome to another 11 WRX 5 speed to 6 speed swap. Did I say swap? I meant swap. A uh, new engine, you know, rear diff, suspension, all that stuff. All right, so we're back. I have no idea what I said before on the last video. We we're supposed to do the clutch and the flywheel, but we didn't have the flywheel. So we got the flywheel now. Actually, we had the flywheel and then I realized I don't have the bolts. So now I have the flywheel and the bolts and the engine mounts and the nuts for the engine mounts, the flange for the rear diff, so the drive shift can actually bolt to this. So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's gotta do that. We got the different bolts. These bolts are for the pressure plate. That's the part number in case you're wondering, 800-508-3110. Then these guys, I believe, what the hell were these? These bolts? For the engine mounts, for this here. These are brand new. Group N. These are Group N, I think. And here, here you have the two nuts. So these go to the block, but that's that's later. And then you have, uh, oh yeah, then you have these bolts for those engine mounts. Yeah, these are the nuts, I think. Or these are, whatever, just, uh, you know, here. In case you're wondering, that's the part number for that. That's the part number for that. And here's the part number for that. I think, yeah, these got to be the flywheel bolts. There's eight of them. And here is the lightweight flywheel. I don't know how much this weighs, maybe 13, maybe 15 pounds. Got the pallet bearing. We're going to install that today. We have some pins for the pressure plate. And uh, yeah. And obviously there's the clutch. So let's start with the pilot bearing. You can use, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna knock this in there. So you can use a socket, as long as it's bigger than the pilot bearing, you wanna stop on the flywheel. What I'm gonna do, use is this, I've got a set of bearing race and seal driver set. I'm just not gonna use the bolt to hold that on. Make sure it's straight on a hard surface. This is not one more, and that's it. It's always flush with the surface of the flywheel. Okay, the bearing you can see how it looks in the back here. See, so this the back of the crankshaft will go inside there. So now it's actually ready to well, you gotta clean it still. And I like to clean the whole thing because as you use your clutch 
you know clutch material will be all over here so to avoid sticking the the powder like clutch stuff dust you know dusty stuff I always clean this off just to you know avoid the dust sticking to the flywheel and just building up because it's gonna build up guys okay especially on the block in these holes it can get everywhere it is dust after all so what I'm gonna, gonna do now is oh, I'll put it on come on now okay one bolt for now just to hold it there I'm gonna finish wiping it down you know this is the most important part that's gotta be spotless you may ask yourself why should have just sprayed the whole thing actually that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna remember that the bottom one is the one that's just holding that in I'm gonna use red Loctite gotta use red Loctite okay now Don't be shy You don't want the flywheel coming off While you're driving I actually forgot what the torque specs are I forgot already. Oh well, for two seconds. I did forget this one doesn't have lactate. Okay, guys. So now the bolt torque is fifty-five point three. Okay. Make room. I'm gonna hold the crank shaft pulley bolt, the twenty-two mil socket. I'm gonna hold it in the back there or I should say in the front and we're gonna tighten these up actually I could just rest it on the ground there we go okay now it's touching the ground the breaker bar is touching the ground so now I'm just gonna do it I'm gonna do a cross pattern start anywhere you want I like to do when there's a lot of bolts, I like to do a two-step, you know, get it tight. I'm doing like a 30-35 right now. Okay, so we're just going to start on the bottom one and go 55.3. Is the engine moving? I think it is. Okay, now the one straight across it. And so on. That was the second one, right? Yep. Rechecking. And we're good. That's it for the climb wheel. Now I'm going to throw in these little pins that the, the clutch people provided. Or was it the flywheel people? I don't know. These pins go right in here. One, two, three. Probably should have put these on when the flywheel was on the floor. All 
All right, guys, when you handle the clutch plate, make sure your hands are clean or you <laughs> and you make sure you put it the right way. Uh, so, or avoid touching the actual, uh, you know, the disc, right? Is what I'm saying. So you can put it here or on here. I'm going to try and match the pins. I think this can go three ways, I believe. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to get the tool. This one's broken. But I have another one somewhere. Okay, so basically, a little stud is going into the pilot bearing. I'm gonna locate the pins. Oh, there's one. Should have just put the clutch plate in first the disc okay it looks like we're in now it's up to you if you want to use blue loctite or not these do have lock uh, washers so any glue is not really necessary some guys will tell you to use at least blue glue all right so you get the idea the torque on these is 11.8 foot-pounds of torque. So we'll be back after this is tight. And again, same pattern, just want to go across. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Yeah, make sure once you finger tight these more or less that this tool comes out. Okay, so it looks like we're good. I'm gonna leave that in there. And I'm gonna grab a, a ratchet. Okay, not gonna use the drill for this. And I'm gonna tighten it by hand. Because if you go with the, the power tool too much, you can bend the pressure plate. If you, you know, keep on tightening one or two, you want to go, what I do is I keep going around and around until it's kind of, you know, slightly too hard for me to, until it gets tight, basically. And I move on to the next one. Okay. Because you're trying, you're pushing the plate through the pins. You can see this one, this guy is barely sticking out and it's got to stick out. The, the guide pins have to stick out. And you can see it's got to be touching the the flywheel. I'll show you the gap right now. See how far we still got to go? That's quite a bit there, okay? So, yeah, just going around. I mean, you could probably set up your power tool, drill whatever you got to a low setting or, you know, weak setting, whatever you got and just go like that keep going around some guys see if i went i went across right up or bottom bolt upper bolt bottom bolt again this one tighten up a little a little bit but it's just you're kind of wasting your time so you want to go around that's the quickest way and grab the ratchet here, not by the handle, so you have less torque in your hand. So you don't tighten it too fast, if you know what I mean. This, this is going to take time. I'm gonna go around. Mm -hmm. 
keep going around until I get, you know, the right reading on every bolt. Because again, you're you're tightening up a big plate. So chances are, like you can see here right now, that you know you tighten all the bolts. Chances are that, let's say I'm going to tighten this one, well, you know, like I just did right now. And you can see that the, as the plate, the other bolts, the second, the third, and so on, not the first, uh, tighten the, the plate more, the one will become loose. So just keep going around until you get your 11.8 or 12, whatever, all around. And go slow, okay? Because the faster you yank on the torque wrench, the the more off you're gonna you're going to be. And we're good. Okay, now you can pull this out, and that's it. You can see how far these pins are sticking out, okay? And we're nice and tight I was gonna say the back of the engine is done but it's not what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change out these factory evil clamps these two this is for your coolant and I'm just gonna use the you know screw on hose clamps all right guys so <clears throat> now this is the second, I, I did so many engines, I don't know for how many years, and I just bought this. Last time I was doing an engine on something, I, I can't remember. I've never used it on, on a Subaru. This kind, I'm afraid, you know, this hoist doesn't go up very high. It is on the last setting, which is the lightest setting, which is a quarter of a ton, which is okay for this engine, it's, it's very light. But I don't know if I'm gonna have enough lift to clear top of the grill here so it's mounted let's go up this is high <clears throat> all right obviously I can do this or this but now we need to install the engine mounts Spider webs already. These torque down to 30.9, these nuts. Don't help. Oh, that thing stripped. Oh man. Where was it not in the hole? Oh wait. It's stripped. This is unbelievable. Actually. It's not stripped, it's been threaded for a bigger bolt. That. Just my luck, man. Always something. Okay, I'm gonna figure this out and we'll be right back. We got updates. Damn it. So this guy, well, at some point it was stripped. It's a very coarse thread. I mean, obviously it worked because, you know, it's threaded and in the block came from somewhere. So the original 14 mil bolt should be a 10, one to five. Okay. This is a 10 by one to five. 
This is how I know because it says 10 by 125. The new guy is a 12175. Look at the difference and look at the thread. Way coarse. Okay. What I was thinking I was going to do is take a heli coil, one size over, or actually it's two sizes over. This would be a 12. 125 which is this guy here this is before i knew what that thread exactly is so you can see it's a 125 right it's 12 but the problem is this is that's that's already a 12 with a thread already so if you do heli coils you know you got to start fresh i don't want to be going 14 by 125 because that would there's enough of meat around uh, but that would be pointless just to change the thread right the size would be still bigger unless they made heli coils that comes down two size or four sizes down uh, so that's not an option so the heli coil is not an option goodbye heli coil and these were great don't get me wrong i would love to use a heli coil and come back to the proper size but the hole is too big okay so so but you know now i know what size this is 12 by 17 by 1.7 so now i have to make a trip to the hardware store which is not going to happen today because it's late and another day <laughs> another delay why is this not closing Uh -huh. Okay. Another day, another delay. Extra bolt. Yes. But I guess the good news is I only need a bolt. So I'm going to lower this down, let it rest on the concrete. And uh, yeah, don't leave, don't leave your engines hanging like that on hoists. Mm -mm. Set it down. Because there is no, no lock on this hoist. I mean, maybe you got a lock on your hoist. I don't, okay? This is a cheap old Harbor Freight hoist. I've had it for 15 years. It's still going strong, but it's only, well, there's no lock, okay, is what I'm saying. So just just, just put, it, put it down, okay? Hopefully I can get the 12 by 1.7 and we can continue tomorrow. See you tomorrow, soon, in a split second. Hey, only 10 seconds went by. I should show you something because I just noticed. Here we have a guide pin on the engine. Uh, so this would be the driver's side. And we got a guide pin on the transmission, which is the driver's side. So I'm going to move this pin and put it on this side. Just a little something I've noticed. And I'm going to grease them up. Grease your guide pins, guys. Grease your guide pins. Now it's a 19. Same grade, 8.8. .8. Actually, slightly better by, by 0 0.8. I did a few things off camera. Yes, I did. Well, I moved that pin. Wasn't easy. Moved this pin from here to here. Basically took vice grips, squeezed them, freed up the pin, took a screwdriver in between the transmission and the vice grip and just slightly, you know, move, while moving it, drove it out. Had to clean it up because I kind of slightly slightly damaged it but you know sandpaper took care of that clean the inside of the pinholes in the transmission now i'm just going to put anti-seize on the on each pin this one and on the one on the block i have to raise the transmission slightly well actually probably all the way up all the way up to the tunnel there i may um, yeah i did put this back on huh I'm gonna have to remove the, oh no, it's not. Okay, it's just there to hold on to the transmission. Okay, so I'm gonna have to remove the pitch mount there so I can actually raise the transmission. The throwout bearing is, is just gonna pop in, lock in into this pressure plate mechanism thing, whatever. This lip here. So you gotta make sure once the engine is in, you, you wanna move the fork 
and pop that baby in then just make sure it's locked you no know, stays in there this is all done basically here all right so i guess i'll install the motor mount slash engine mount and then you're gonna see me struggle finally put this thing in after seven seven months this thing has been here for seven months